G'day friends, welcome to video 5 in the stamp series. Today I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step process to create one of the first little examples I made with the stamps when I got them. And all you need is the stamp and a pencil. Now I'm going to use the Pilot OPT mechanical pencil. I've shown this a lot lately. It is my favorite. I don't know where I got it. I'm pretty sure. I know I got it in Japan, but I feel like I got it from a 7-Eleven. So <laughs> if you can't run to a 7-Eleven in Japan, uh, maybe just check on jet pens. But to be honest, any mechanical pencil will work for this. I like using mechanical pencil because I can get a really, really fine, delicate line. And when I'm doing a lot of the line work in this illustration today, I do need that. And I don't want to have to keep going back and sharpening. So I like mechanical pencils for that. We're going to use the unbothered set. And today we are going to use this little lady right here. So let me just grab my paper. I've got a piece of Canson watercolor paper here. This was actually an Inktober piece that just never made it to YouTube and I never finished it uh, because I didn't like it. So <laughs> I'm just going to use it as an element to kind of stamp my image on. I've gone in with the VersaFine smoky gray ink. I'm using a gray today because we're going to use lead or graphite and uh, it will actually just kind of blend in as we do it. So I'm going to get up close and personal and go through step by step. Now we're in really close today because these lines are going to be some fine delicate lines and I do want to help you add a little bit so uh, let's just start by outlining some of the lines that we do want to keep now I want to connect this M shape here remember I've been telling you when I do hair I do like to put a bang on them and uh, or a little fringe and just make that M shape to break it up so you can see even on this stamp set I've used my own advice and I've gone ahead and done that so we are just gonna darken up some of these lines um, because I want the whole thing to be covered in graphite we are literally using the stamp as a blueprint today so I'm just gonna go over some of these outside lines and darken them up before I start adding my detail All right, when I'm darkening in this jawline here, I want to bring this up just a tiny bit towards the ear. I don't want to connect it to the hairline, but I do want to cut off some of that ear a little bit. Right, under the chin here, you can see there's some of those little cross-hatching details. Uh, I'm just going to lightly shade that in, or a little bit darker than lightly probably, just, just to uh, fill that space in. I do want it to be quite a contrasting shadow. And uh, now we're going to hit up the face details. So let's start with the eyes. I do like to keep this top line very, very dark. And I like to keep that wing in there because I'm a little obsessed with wings. <laughs> it's much easier to draw them on paper than it is to make them look even on your face, no? Um, I'm gonna go in underneath as well. And I just wanna take this line here. I actually do wanna connect it just in there a little bit. We are gonna close off the eyes. Now, if you press way too dark here, she's gonna have some mad panda bear caught in a snowstorm eyes. So, just lighten up a little bit. If you do have a bit of a problem, it is graphite, you can erase it. Um, but also, we're gonna go in with shading. So, sometimes I'll, you'll find it actually, it actually isn't much of a problem. Now, I'm going to just darken up the outside. You can see that there's, I'm not gonna fully color in that eye, the uh, the pupil. I'm just gonna let some of those white bits still show through. That will just suggest that there's some detail going on in the eyes, but really we all know that that's mostly just a gray space. <laughs> You'll just suggest to the people that are looking at it that you tried really hard and got really, really fine detail. Now, for the shading on the face, I'm gonna take this hairline here and it's going to guide me to where I wanna put in my jawbone shading. So I'm just going to lightly pencil in a line kind of going towards this part of the mouth. So where this the middle of the mouth is, I want to just lightly pencil in a line there. And underneath that, I just want to give it a bit of shading. Now, be careful when you're shading this area. If you go down too far or go in too heavy, she's going to look like she's rocking some stubble. So uh, that's, if you're doing a bearded lady piece, by all means, go ahead and do that. But I like to just keep it very, very soft. Now, here's the beauty about working with the graphite today. If I do end up going down here and I think, uh-oh, I've given her a beard, I'm just going to get my eraser and I'm going to erase that out. So if you do have any troubles, just know that working with graphite is, is a really easy way out when we're, uh, we're learning how to shade and how to put our shadows in. I've just put this down here and I've gone a little bit dark, but that just tells me that the rest of my shading I want to put in a little bit darker as well. Uh, we're going to take this side down here, we're going to put a bit of shadow on the side of the face. 
And then the same thing when we get to this ear and where this hair kind of ends, we're just going in a little bit towards the mouth and put a little bit of shading in there. Now that's just going to cut her cheekbones in and give her a very, very um, gorgeous cheekbone. Now I want to shade a little bit under the eyes. So I do like to darken up just around the outside of the eyes. I find it more alluring when the, the outside of the eyes are just a dark shadow. So I'm just going to put a little bit of shading on the outside of the eyes. Underneath, I kind of want to leave a little bit of a gap between the bottom eye line and where I'm going to put, put a little bit of shading. You really don't need to go hard. You just need to lightly feather some strokes underneath there. And that's just going to give her a bottom eyelid or like the... Um, the socket, the, you know that, the line underneath your eye? I couldn't for the life of me figure out what it's called today. Let's go into the nose. Now, I've talked about shading uh, features before and changing these features up, but I'm gonna give her quite a small nose. That's why the, the mechanical pencil is great for this. I'm just gonna darken up the two little dots there we have for a nostril and put an upside down little rainbow shape between those. Now, this is how small her nose is going to be today. I hope you can see it. Um, I'm going to shade a little bit underneath that upside down rainbow we put there. And then I'm going to put a little bit of shading on the outside as if I were drawing little brackets. And I'm going to connect those to those little dots. It is a very small space, so honestly, just some shadow areas underneath your little upside down rainbow will serve you fine. I'm going to draw a little bit of a line from this little upside down rainbow side. So on the right hand side, I'm going to draw it up and I'm going to curve just to the top of the eyelid, just like that. Now that's gonna be, that's gonna help me know where I wanna put my nose contour, my nose shading. And I'm just gonna go in very lightly and shade up that line. Now when I get to the eye, I'm just gonna leave this middle part open here and that will just create a little bit of a highlight and show that there's a bit of a 3D thing going on there so her eye doesn't look too flat. Now if you were gonna go dark in any of these areas, I would suggest going a little bit darker towards the eye not going dark down the nose, but maybe going a little bit dark underneath the nose. For this eye over here, we want to do the same kind of effect where we leave a little bit of white space, but we do shade just towards that nose. We don't need to go back down that nose line, but I do just want to put a little bit of shading in there. So you can see her face is already starting to get a little bit of dimension. Now, if you really want to snatch that nose out, just put a little bit of shading back up this way and she'll look like she's got a pinched little nose going on there. The lips, I just want to outline them. She's going to have some full-on glam Kylie Jenner lips today. And uh, we're kind of outlining them a little bit. Now, I like to leave a little bit of a white space in the middle and just shade the outsides. And then the same thing down here, I like to leave a little bit of white space. You can go back in and obviously add that those white spaces with a, a white gel pen. I don't like to work with gel pen when I'm using graphite. I don't know why, it's just not my favorite. Um, but that's pretty much it for the face shading. Because I'm ultra, I'm going to redefine those lashes where they were and make them a little bit sharper and punch them out from that shading a little bit. And then I am going to add a few little lashes on the top and just on the outside of the eyes. And we can shade in the little ears. I find it best just to shade them in quite quickly. There's no rhyme or reason to how you need to do that. For the shoulder area, I do want to make a bit of a shoulder here. So if you imagine that there's a circle coming off this part here, we're going to kind of cut it down this way. And then we're going to pull this line back in and that will just start to look like where her shoulder, where her arm might be. Now I've made it a little bit big, so I'm actually gonna shade it in a little bit. And let's take some of the shading up that neck and we're gonna leave the middle part of the neck quite plain and uh, really open and white. And that will just create, again, some more dimension, making your objects look a little bit more 3D than, than we know that they are. Now I think that's fine for the shading down there. Let's go into the hair because the hair is something I know people get a little bit upset about and I just want to show you a nice fun way to fill in this kind of a hair but give it a really interesting look. We're actually just going to pick kind of this area up here and we're going to focus all of our lines kind of connecting down to the bottom of that hair. Now it doesn't have to be uh, any specific stroke or any specific line. I like to clump a few lines together so maybe like three at a time um, because I think it's a little more interesting and I'll just put a bunch of lines coming off now whatever lines we don't have left that's where I want to take the lines somewhere else so I'm going to put them just the same thing that we were doing just adding in lines but 
We've got the ones coming down to the bottom of the hair, now we want to draw some off those. Depending on how you do this, it might look like your hair's kind of got a finger wave going on or a little bit of a curly texture, but again, this is not any kind of uh, realism that we're doing today. This is simply a fun technique for you to try if, you are, if you're looking to change some stuff up. Now on the drawing that I originally did, I took some of the bigger spaces and I actually just shaded those in. So just filled some of those areas, nothing too crazy, but I did just want to, I did want to bring some, uh, some interesting shading up into the hair as well. So wherever you can see a line that's kind of thicker than the rest or a negative space, just uh, take your pencil in there and shade it a little bit. It kind of has this stained glass effect almost. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Now I did draw two feathers coming off her head, so I've already shown this new tutorial, but I'll do it again here. I'm going to take one feather and this is going to be a big one going off this way. It's a very pointy kind of looking feathers, but let's call them feathers. And I'm going to cross another one this way, but make it a little bit smaller. Just so we've got something visually interesting happening there. Now we want to take that line and follow the curve of that, the first stroke that we put down. We want to follow that curve, widen it out towards the middle, and then taper it off towards the end. And we want to do the same thing coming back down this way. So you look like you've got some leaf shapes coming off her head. I'm going to put one this way. And because I'm drawing behind, I'm not going to draw that detail over that feather. We can erase the line that's in there in a second, just so you don't get confused. Oh, I'm struggling. I can't get the thing off my... <laughs> there we go. We're going to erase that line there just so we don't confuse ourselves. I actually think this bit went a, a bit too thick for my liking, so I'm going to erase that and just put it in a little bit thinner. A little bit more delicate and dainty. Now for here, I told you before that I would just take a little V shape. For this one, we're gonna add another one in as well, but kind of more rounded. I don't know why I did it like that, but I wanna show you exactly how I did the piece that I'm demonstrating today, so that's what we're gonna do. So a little rainbow and a V next to each other. We wanna darken up that middle line because now we know where it's gonna go, and then we wanna just hit up that outside line too. For this feather underneath here, I just wanna put that little rainbow shape and then connect them in darken up the lines. Now we can see easier how they cross. I did not put this detail in the original illustration, but I do want to show you today. So let me just get rid of some of these lines that are distracting me. All right, it looks like I've put just a little bit of a, I don't know, some line work in those. So let's just add some lines there. I want to show you that just adding simple strokes can give an interesting effect, especially if you fade them off down towards the bottom or like towards the end. Um, making them thinner or making them thicker. It's just an interesting little element that you can add and kind of suggest the, um, you know, the breaks in the feather. And I do want this to be a little bit more punched out because I like how they taper off into this really fine point. So I'll just show you quickly, if you found you've lost any of your highlights, you can use a, a white uniball signo to go back in and pull them out a little bit, especially in the eye area here. If you really want to put those catch lights back in and pull uh, pull some focus towards the eyes. You can just go in with the uniball signo. Now on her face I've actually put a lot of freckles. I like to do freckles. Uh, I don't know why mostly because I shade on the outside of the face I find sometimes the inside can look a bit bare. I will just put freckles in and I, they're just various sizes of circles and dots So if you're really into pointillism, this will be right up your alley. Freckles is one of those things that I think people sometimes forget about and uh, I think it's such a beautiful feature. All right, so these are the side-by-sides. I hope it was simple enough for you to follow along. Um, obviously, if you use a textured paper, your pencil is gonna be a bit more textured looking and, you, and you'll find a lot more of that pencil texture. On a smooth paper, if you burnish that pencil in, it will uh, it will just look like a solid color. So I do like that effect as well. This is Tomoe River paper, this, this insert. This is just a traveler's notebook insert. But you can see there, they're exactly the same. I like that I use this off cut to uh, kind of spark something new. I don't know what I'm going to turn this into, but I'm sure it'll end up somewhere. Um, and that's just it for today. It can be as simple as that. All you need is a mechanical pencil and a stamp. And I hope that was helpful for you to uh, kickstart your imagination and have a think about where you could take some of these techniques and how you could apply them to some of your own work. So I'm going to show you a close up on this. I don't have many examples. I just have these two, but I'll close them up anyway. And until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.